for your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights. You were close like no of the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing, oh, cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I
taking us higher as we go from glory to glory to glory we'll never be the same we'll never be the same we go from glory to glory to glory we're forever changed forever changed you called me Well, hallelujah. I'm so glad you got to join us for praise and worship. I'm excited about this word. I want to get with you right now. Praise the Lord. Title of this message is going to be the key to obedience. And we're first going to talk about Jesus being our high priest. Let's look and open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter five. We're going to start in verse seven and eight. If you have your Bibles with you and you want to stand up while we read this, you're welcome to join us. We'll put the verses on the screen as well. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, 7, During the days of Jesus' life, 
on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Verse 8, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to speak your word to all those that are gathered online and be able to watch it now live and even later as we share it. Lord, you learned obedience through what you suffered and you were heard because of your reverent submission. Teach us, Lord, to be reverently submissive and to learn obedience as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at that again, Hebrews 5, verse 7. So the days of Jesus' life on earth, on earth as one of us, as a man, praise the Lord, fully God, yet also we have to understand he became a man and walked this earth. He offered up prayers and petitions like we do. With loud cries and tears, he offered them up to the one who could save him from death. And the Bible says he was heard because of his reverent submission. You know, we like to pray. We like God to hear our prayers. Why was Jesus's prayer heard every time he prayed? The Bible says because of his reverent submission to God, walking with the Father, talking to him, he was always heard because he was always in submission to God's will. He walked in obedience with the Father. You know, it's, it's wrong to think that we could just mock God, disobeying him, living however we, however we want, and then calling on him to answer our somewhat sometimes selfish prayers because we're not walking in his will. We're not yielding our life to uh, to obey him and follow him in our homes and families and businesses. Yet we want to call on him as though he's there to answer our every beckoning call without recognizing whether we really want to do his will or not. That would be wrong to think that way. Jesus was heard because of his reverent submission and he was obeying him. The Bible goes on to say, in verse 8, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Jesus learned as a man, praise the Lord, walking this earth, he learned obedience and followed the Father's will. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 29 says it like this, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. He hears our cry as the body of Christ, righteous in him, who have a heart to want to follow him and obey him. He hears our prayer. Amen. Proverbs 15 verse 8 says, The Lord detests the sacrifices of the wicked, but love those who pursue righteousness. Think about that. He detests the religious going through the motions of the sacrifices, he's making this uh, pertaining to like all of the old covenant rituals and the sacrifices, just going through the motions of religion, but not really wanting to have a heart to obey and follow his will or his purposes. The Bible says that God detests that. He hates that kind of thing. He hates it today. If people are just going through the motions of religion, without really having a heart to follow God. They're just going to church because maybe, you know, they're just going through the motions of their habit in life, but their life doesn't line up to be following and obeying God. The Bible says God detests that. You know, that, that's interesting the way Proverbs puts it. The Lord detests the sacrifices of the wicked, the religious motions of sacrifice, but he loves those who are really wholeheartedly pursuing righteousness, his righteousness. Remember, I'm going to give you in this message, the secret, the key to obedience. And it's not hard. Hebrews 5, chapter 8, um, 5, verse 8, 
picks it up again. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. You know, Jesus was fully God, but remind, remind you that he was also fully man and he suffered. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, it says it this way. Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So although he was with God and was God in the beginning, by God's will, the word was sent to become a man and took on the form of human likeness to walk this earth with us. In verse 8, it says, And being found in the very appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Obedience even to the obedience of death on a cross. Wow. Now that's full obedience, Lord. Not my will, but yours. It's your will to go and die on the cross. He was fully obedient. The Bible says, again, he learned obedience through what he suffered. So we're talking about him being in reverent, humble submission to the Father and also him being in humble obedience, but also having his prayer answered and always heard by the one he was walking with. Now let's look a little bit about love and obedience. We're going to go now to the book of John. And in John chapter 14, in verse 15, it says this, If you love me, you will obey what I command. Obedience, folks, it doesn't have to be hard or such a struggle or a burden. I'm going to show you that our obedience and loving God and obeying Him could be easy and light. Jesus tells us that way. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. You know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It doesn't have to be a struggle to walk in obedience and walk in the will of God and therefore enjoying all of the blessing that comes with following Him. Amen? John 14, 21 says this, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. Wow, that's pretty simple, but yet profound. If you love him, you will obey him. He says it again right here in 21. Whoever has the commands and obeys the will of God, the word of God, that's how you can tell he's the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. God wants to reveal or manifest or show himself to all of us in deeper and deeper ways as we get to know him, as we get to hear his voice, as we get to follow his will in our marriage, in our home, in our businesses, in our finance, in our world missions, in our church, as we're following him and obeying him in those little things, he will live with us and show himself to us. Some people have trouble saying, I don't really see God or I can't really hear from him. He seems far from me. Well, here's your answer. If we love him, you'll begin to obey him. Is there a lot of things in your life that's out of the will of God and he's not showing himself to you? He loves you. He wants to show himself. Go back and start obeying him and with some things that you already know is his will, and as you step out there, he will reveal himself more to you. But God is not mocked. He's not going to just keep showing himself to those who have rejected his plan for their life and for different specific things in the areas of their life that they say no to, and yet you want to hear from him and cry out to him and have all of your prayers answered. God's not mocked. He will show himself to those who love him and obey him. And he wants to do that for everyone. It goes on to say in, chapter, in John chapter 14, I'm now going to look at verse 23 and 24. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, 
and we will come to him and make our home with him. Wow. Walking with God, their home is with me, living in me. That's what he wants to do for us as a church. We walk with him. We talk with him. He lets us know he's there. He leads us and guides us. And more and more as we obey him and follow him, he reveals himself and his will to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 24 says this. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. So it's very clear. Jesus is speaking in the new covenant and letting us know if we really love him, you'll see that in our life by us obeying and following him. And he makes his home with us. He'll lead us, guide us. He'll answer our prayers because our will will be lined up with his. We'll be praying according to his will because his will and our will line up as one. Amen. Let's look at our compassionate high priest. We're going to go back to Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 5. We started in verse 7 and 8. Now we're going to back up to verse 1. The Bible says, Every high priest is selected from among men and is appointed to represent them in matters relating to God, to offer gifts and sacrifice for sins. So the high priest, again, is the mediator between God and man the whole Levitical priesthood would take the offerings from the people and sacrifice to God on behalf of the men, praise the Lord. And the high priest was the one in charge of all of it. So he was appointed and selected by God. But I want to tell you, in the new covenant, because we have a high priest that's once and for all, that we are all now selected and appointed by God as priests, where we no longer need mediators to bring our sacrifice, we can bring our sacrifice of praise and our sacrifice of a laid down life for him. Hallelujah. And we are all called and selected, appointed, anointed to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Now, there's only one high priest, and our high priest today is Jesus Christ. But we're a nation of a royal priesthood. Well, with that, you know, we're chosen and we're called out. Yet we ought to reverently honor and submit to his will, being thankful that we've been called out, praise God, to have this relationship with him. He's talking about the priesthood. And in verse 2, he goes on to say, he, the high priest, is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. Because the priesthood and the high priest was a man who was also subject to weaknesses and temptations, it says he's able to deal with the congregation, with the, the tribes of Israel, also gently and humbly, because he himself has the weaknesses, the same weaknesses that they do. In verse 3, it says, this is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as the sins of the people. Now, Jesus, our high priest, doesn't have to offer sacrifices for his own sin as well as ours because he is without sin. He never sinned. But what they're writing to us in Hebrews to let us know is the high priest did feel and did the sufferings and the struggles and the trials and had compassion. And Jesus has compassion because he also was tempted in every way as we are. So he understands and he has compassionate. He's a compassionate high priest who knows our sufferings and our weaknesses because he felt them also, even though as our hero, he never yielded to them as we do. Praise the Lord. So we have a compassionate high priest who understands. Matter of fact, it says it this way in Hebrews 4 and verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, 
but we have one who has been tempted in every way. That's very important to understand. Even though Jesus is the Son of God, we must also see that he's the Son of Man. You see, he had to come in the flesh. He had to come become one of us in order to be our mediator, our high priest, and win the victory for us. There's some religions and some people who don't really see Jesus as coming as a man. Yes, he is God, but he came as a man, praise the Lord, fully God, yet fully man. It had to be that way for him to be our sacrificial atonement, our priest in our place. Hallelujah. So it says here that truly he was tempted in every way just as we are. Look at that again. Hebrews verse 4 and verse 15. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Church, I'm telling you, Jesus is able to sympathize with all of the weaknesses you have in your body, in your mind, anything you struggle with from this fallen world any areas of your life that's weak, Jesus has compassion and can sympathize with you because it says, we have one high priest who has been tempted in every way just as we are. That's something to think about. Our Lord Jesus walked this earth, this fallen earth, and he was tempted in every way just like we are. So he knows what you're going through. He knows your weaknesses and he knows your struggles, although he was without sin. Praise the Lord. So it says this in Isaiah uh, 53. Let's look a little bit more about Jesus who came as a man. In 53, the end of verse 2, it says, He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Let's think about that. No beauty or majesty just to look upon him. Nothing in his appearance. He wasn't like attractive like a movie star where people are drawn to him because of what, how he looked. No. No, the, God didn't choose it to be that way. He didn't want people attracted to him because of, of, of his good looks or his beauty. No, as a matter of fact, it goes on to say, Verse 3, he was despised and rejected by men. This Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, who became one of us, walked as a man, humbled himself, walked as a servant, and he was despised and he was rejected by man. He says he was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. He knows your suffering. He was very familiar with it. If you've ever been despised or rejected by people, Jesus knows. You can't hide it or mask over it, you know, with him. He knows all of your emotional struggles. He knows everything you've been through. Jesus suffered in the same way. He was despised and he was rejected. The Bible says he was a man of sorrows. It says, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Okay. So this Jesus, praise the Lord, our high priest, familiar with our sufferings, familiar with our weakness. He's a compassionate high priest because he became one of us and walked this earth feeling all of the struggles and the temptations that you and I feel. But yet we must remember he never fell to it. He never yielded. He never fell to it, but he felt it just like we do. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. Let's go on. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 3 says this. This is why the high priest in that day had to offer sacrifices for his own sins, but our Lord Jesus never did have to offer sacrifice for his own sins. Okay, praise God. But they're, again, they're trying to make the relation that the priest was like one of the people. Our God, hallelujah, in his infinite wisdom, sent the word to become a man 
to walk among us and become one of us, son of God and, praise the Lord, son of man. Hebrews chapter 5, moving on to verse 4. No one takes this honor to be called out from God to be a high priest. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called of God just as Aaron was. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. Okay? He, didn't, he didn't choose this himself. He was humble. God chose him. You're going to be the high priest of all. Okay, I'm sending you to represent mankind, to be their high priest. The high priest was chosen by God. Just like all of the, all of you, praise God, are anointed and called and chosen by God, elect, chosen by Him, in to be into His family. Amen? We don't take that just for granted, but we, we honor that with reverent submission and a will to obey and follow the one who called us out of the world and into his marvelous light. It's glorious and we're thankful and we express our thankfulness following him. And again, I'm going to show you the key to obeying him and being able to follow him fully. Glory to God. So Hebrews Chapter 5, God said, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. Verse 6, and he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Not the order of the Levitical old covenant priesthood, but an eternal order to be the high priest for us forever. Then moving forward where we started, verse 7, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience. Wow, our Lord learned obedience as we also are learning obedience from what he suffered. Yes, there's trials and there's shakings in the earth and all kinds of things that you know, are here now and are coming again soon. And so we must learn by all the struggles we go through, learn obedience and stay faithful following him through whatever trials that happens in this life and in this world. Just like Jesus, he learned obedience. And then verse nine, praise God says, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to, he, to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So it says he, he learned obedience and once made perfect. Once made perfect. Talking about Jesus. So he was made perfect, obeying and following. You see, to be the Savior, he had to be tested in every way. He was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. He was, went through all kinds of trials. He prayed to God. He had a choice to continue obeying his will. He had a choice to go to the cross or not, but he humbly followed and revered God, submitted to his will, learned obedience, and praise God, he was made perfect. Here, you see, the law of God is perfect, and all of us fell short. There was a problem with it. The problem wasn't the law. The problem was mankind and our nature. So we could not con completely follow it. Jesus came and was tempted in every way like we are, but was made perfect by obeyed the will of God all through his life, obeyed the law, followed it completely, and was perfected. Hallelujah. So he did it representing us becoming our high priest. The high priest is the mediator between God and man. Jesus obeyed the law fully, was made perfect, so that all of us who believe in him are also given his righteousness as a gift, and we are perfected forever, hallelujah, because our high priest is perfected forever. Amen? He obeyed it fully. Hallelujah. Amen perfected forever. So he now, he's become the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Everybody say with me right now in faith, the source. 
Praise God. Yes, He is the source. He is my source for eternal salvation. It's not my obedience that gives me eternal life. It's His obedience and what He's done. But because He has obeyed and He lives in me, now my heart is transformed and I want to live my life as He did, fully obeying the Father. But praise God, I'm going to give you the key to obedience. You see, we can obey. We can follow the will and the Word of God. We can know His will and we can follow it. Praise the Lord. Now here's how. Let's move on. Hebrews chapter 5 and go into verse 11. He says, we have much to say about this. Much to say about how Jesus was perfected forever and how Jesus is the, is the priest in the order of Melchizedek, how Jesus became the righteousness for us. But he says it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Oh, I'm not talking to this congregation. Praise God, you're quick to learn. But praise God, we're sharing this with people all over the place and we need to share and understand deeper truth. And this is such an important truth. Verse 12, in fact, it says, by the time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary tru truths of God all over again. You need milk and not solid food. Now, here is the key to learning to reverently submit, as Jesus did, to the will of God and obey Him fully and walk with Him, love Him, and have Him manifest Himself to us lead us and guide us, have all of our prayers heard because we're, you know, obeying Him and walking with Him. Here's the key. It says this, verse 13, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. That's right. Here's why so many folks have such a struggle obeying and walking in the will of God having a more intimate, personal relationship with Him as Jesus and God lives with them and begins to show themselves to us more and more. That comes by, if you love me, you will obey me. And here's the key to obedience. It's this truth and teaching about righteousness. That's right. Righteousness is simply being in right standing with God. But so many people don't understand that our high priest, praise the Lord, has made that sacrifice once and for all, perfecting us to believe forever in him and giving us the gift of righteousness. So now, praise the Lord, the key to obedience is understanding that you are in right standing with God based on what Christ has done. When I know that my sins are completely washed. One sacrifice forever. My sins are washed yesterday, today, and forever. To tell us die, we like to say. It is finished. When I know this and understand the righteousness I've received, knowing I have faith in what Christ has done, then it becomes easy to obey because now really it's not such a work or an effort it's simply enjoying my new nature. You see, church, our new nature is not sinful. Though we were once sinful and we once struggled with obedience and following Him, we are now born again. The sin nature is dead and buried, and we are the righteousness of God. His will is mingled now with our will and our spirit, praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell with us. We hear His voice, and it's our nature to obey. Yes, we still have our old soulless realm, the mind, will, and emotions that has some of the past still written on it. But praise God, we're renewing our mind with the truth of who we are in Christ 
And now we're learning to follow him. And it's such good news, church, as we begin to hear his voice and obey his will, he manifests or shows himself to us. And as we continue to walk with him, he shows himself more and more. We develop a close relationship with the one who saved us all. And praise God, we recognize him as our source for eternal salvation. And now, praise God, the good works flow out of us easily. It's not such a work. It's not a burden. It's a joy because it's simply our new nature flowing out. The key to obedience, understanding the truth of righteousness and knowing who you are. Saints of the living God, you are the righteousness of Christ. If you've been born again, you're born from above. Christ lives in you. You are no longer a sinner. You are holy. It's so important right now that the body of Christ begins to understand this so we can move on to maturity. The Bible goes on to say in Hebrews 6, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and, about, and go on to maturity. Let's not lay again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. Let's don't lay again these foundations and reteach people about their sin and their need for salvation after they're already saved. I'm telling you, Praise God, we need to educate the church. That's why God is sending us around the world to teach pastors and leaders and teaching whoever is watching this video. Maybe you're, you got this from a friend who wants you to understand righteousness. Maybe you're in a church that's continuing to teach you about your sinfulness. It's time to go on to maturity. And we can't go on to maturity as it says right here in Hebrews. We can't. We, we need milk, not solid food because we're not acquainted with the teaching of righteousness. Share this with your friends and family. Share this with others who, under, who need to understand about the righteousness they have in Christ, to see themselves as holy and righteous. If I confess that I'm a sinner, then what I'm saying, Jesus, your blood was not good enough. It didn't transform me. I'm still in my sin. But now that we're born again, we need to confess, hey, I was a sinner. All have sinned, but praise God now I'm back in right standing with God because Jesus washed me as my high priest. His sacrifice was good enough once and for all. And now I've been born into the family of God and I'm righteous and holy. And as I walk with him understanding this, good works and good deeds and righteousness flows out of me easily. It's not a burden to obey. It's not hard to obey the teachings of God. For us who are Christians, as we grow in this truth, it becomes like natural. It's supernaturally natural now. It flows out. God bless you all. I'm so glad you had a chance to be with us today online. Share this with others. Praise the Lord. We're looking forward to getting back in service together soon. Have a great day. Amen.